the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, good evening and welcome to the Cathedral of St. Francis de Sales for the celebration of the Vigil Mass for the Most Reverend Mario Eduardo Dosonville. In his will, Bishop Dosonville made known his desire that a Vigil Mass be celebrated in memorial of his passing. To those visiting from outside the diocese, on behalf of the people in the Diocese of Homatibido, I will come and thank you for coming to be part of our journey of prayer and send off for our beloved father and shepherd, Bishop Dawsonville. My name is Father Simon Peter Engwright, recently called to serve as diocesan administrator following the death of Bishop Dawsonville. Tonight, we celebrate this Vigil Mass in the cathedral where Bishop Mario was installed last year as the fifth bishop of Homatibido. While tomorrow, we'll celebrate a funeral mass at the cathedral where he celebrated the vigil of his, of his installation, coming full circle in his pastoral journey to the diocese. I would like to express special gratitude to our former bishop and Bishop Dawsonville's immediate predecessor, now Archbishop Shelton Fab of the Archdiocese of Louisville. Thank you for coming tonight to preside at this Mass. Thank you for being with us at this time of loss and grief. I am most certain that your presence brings comfort and consolation to the people of Homatibido and to all who grieve. I also would like to express my thanks and at the same time welcome Bishop Michael Fisher, the 15th Bishop of the Diocese of Buffalo, New York, a very good friend and close collaborator in the vineyard with Bishop Dawsonville when they both served in the Archdiocese of Washington. Thank you for coming and accepting to be the homilist at this liturgy. I also offer my welcome and gratitude to their excellencies, the bishops who join us tonight. Thank you for being here. Your presence means a lot to us. Last but not least, I would like to recognize and welcome the family and friends of Bishop Dawsonville. Thank you for being here. And please know that we are in this together. My dear brothers and sisters, yesterday I received a letter from His Excellency Christoph Cardinal Pierre, the Apostolic Nuncio to the United States. He followed up this morning with a phone call expressing his condolences and his inability to be present for the funeral rites of Bishop Dawsonville. His Eminence relayed to me a message from the Holy See 
which I now have the privilege of reading to you. The very Reverend Simon Peter Enright, Diocesan Administrator. His Holiness Pope Francis was saddened to learn of the untimely death of Bishop Mario Eduardo Dawsonville and he sends heartfelt condolences to you, the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the diocese. In joining you in thanksgiving to Almighty God for Bishop Dawsonville's devoted Episcopal service to the church in the Archdiocese of Washington and the Diocese of Homotibido, exemplified by a spirit of joy, zeal for the spread of the gospel, and dedicated pastoral ministry to the underserved communities. His Holiness commends the late Bishop Saul to the love and mercy of Christ, the Good Shepherd. To those gathered for the Mass of Christian burial, and to all who mourn Bishop Dawsonville's death in the sure hope of the resurrection, the Holy Father cordially imparts his blessing as a pledge of peace and consolation in the Lord. Signed, Cardinal Pietro Carolin, Secretary of State. My dear brothers and sisters, as we continue our celebration of Mass, may we be comforted in our sorrow and consoled in our grief as we begin the journey of sending off our beloved Bishop to the loving embrace of the Father. Thank you. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I am a great sinner in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my sins. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Mario, to whom you committed the care of your family, may, with the manifold fruits of his labors, eternal in enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners to announce a year of favor from our Lord, a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness, and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming the high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. According to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man, who is not a shepherd, and whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming, and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. The Gospel of the Lord.
My dear Michael, how's the weather in Buffalo? Well, it's cold up here, Mario. Well, it's nice and warm down here. That was part of my last conversation with Bishop Mario, my good friend, my brother Bishop, your shepherd. When I heard of his passing, like all of you, I was very much taken aback and shocked because as we know, he was a man who was just full of life. Everything about him reeked happiness and joy. And I know that you didn't have him for that long of a time here in Huma Thibodeau, but I know that he loved you. Whenever I spoke to him, he just was in high heaven when he spoke about his clergy and his, peop his good people here that he had grown to really love. We were always teasing one another. He was saying, you know, you're, you're, you're gonna go to a diocese soon when we were both auxiliaries in Washington. And uh, he was always hoping for someplace warm and I was always hoping for someplace cold. I liked the cold weather. So I think we both got our blessings. But we gather today again to pay our faith-filled farewell to Bishop Mario. We gather to surround Bishop Mario and his family with love as we accompany him into his everlasting life with prayer, handing him back to the God who loved him and gave him life, whose mercy and love know no bounds. I welcome all of you. Father Simon Peter, thank you again for your warm welcome. And I welcome all of you who gather here. I think it's appropriate, isn't it, that today we celebrate in our church calendar the feast of, of St. Don Bosco. St. Don Bosco who founded the, uh, the Order of the Salesians that was based on the spirit and teachings of, of uh, St. Francis de Sales. Don Bosco who really gave his life and gave his ministry to those in society who were most vulnerable and in need. And doesn't that, in a very special way, describe Bishop Mario in his ministry over the years as a priest as well as a bishop? I'd like to thank, again, His Excellency Archbishop Bob, Archbishop of Louisville, and again, all of the bishops here who are with us to celebrate this life. I welcome in a special way and thank my brother priests, priests from here in Huma Thibodeau, as well as those that have come from Washington, D.C., where he served so many wonderful years there as a priest and an auxiliary bishop. I'd like to welcome in a special way, though, all of the lay people, but in a special way, the Beau family, who really he saw as his family, as we know, his, he was an only child. His mother and father had passed away, and uh, I know he thought of you uh, very much as his, his, his relatives and, and kin. So we thank you for all of the wonderful blessings and, and, and things that, that you did over the years to make him a part, to help him be a part of your family. As we meet, to say goodbye to our beloved bishop and friend. Again, I send my condolences and continued prayers to you, his family, his brother priests, religious, and to all the faithful of this beautiful diocese. You know, I, I know what it is to be an ordinary, to be a bishop of a diocese in your heart really goes out to your people. And I know Mario's heart was here with you all, all of you. 
May the good Lord console you at your loss and strengthen you in the days to come. We begin our journey of prayer and remembrance of Bishop Dorsonville with this wake. And a wake is always a memorial mass is this beginning is a journey, right? A funeral is always that movement of journey as we've been journeying with Christ since our baptism, since Bishop Mario was embraced by his God at his baptism, given that grace where God, Christ says to him, you are mine, follow me, and I will be with you in the days to come. This beautiful understanding that, that awake as we come to the end of our life in that long journey of grace and love with God, that now we see him to his final, final rest. We all have our memories of Bishop Mario. Again, that genial smile, that laugh, that reassuring hand on the shoulder. I mean, my certain memories is every morning just about our offices weren't that far apart from one another at the Catholic Center in Washington, uh, uh, in Northeast Washington there. And uh, he would come down just about every morning uh, to my office. I was the vicar for clergy uh, for a number of years uh, in the, the Diocese of Washington. And I think he realized, he, he always would come in and say, how's Darth Vader this morning? Now, those those of you who know the work of the vicar for clergy <laughs> know that that can be a, a little difficult. So he was always there with a wonderful word of advice. Uh, he, uh, he became an auxiliary bishop before I did, so he had really the opportunity to get around and to, uh, to also see the priests and the people of the parishes through confirmations and parish visitations. And, and the like, and, and he would bring that back to me and said, uh, yeah, Mike, you might want to give Father so-and-so a call, or you might want to pay Father so-and-so a visit. You know, I think he could use uh, uh, a good word or, or maybe uh, um, a little talking to, I guess. But uh, he, he was always very uplifting, though. He tried to always look at the bright, the bright side of things. As we gather our own memories and, and our, our, our own joys of, of our experience with him, we do this also in the context of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who really was the center of Bishop, Bishop Dorsonville's life, his ministry, one Jesus who Bishop Mario tried to follow in every aspect of his ministry as a priest and as a bishop. He was so devoted to the, as I said, the poor and the vulnerable, you know, those who were in need, the migrants and the immigrants, the poor. He was the director of, of uh, the Spanish Catholic Center in Washington for a number of years. And again, there, pour out his heart in the care and ministry of those in need. It's appropriate, I think, also that we reflect upon the readings that speak of Jesus today as the high priest, the anointed one, who called Bishop Mario to be a priest and ultimately to come into the fullness of orders as a bishop and shepherd. You know, Pope Francis, at the beginning of his pontificate, urged us as priests, he said, get out and get the smell of the sheep among, you know, in you. In other words, get out there and be with your people. Reek of their needs, reek of their of their wants and their desires, reek of who they are and what they suffer, reek of their joys. And I think again, 
this definitely describes so beautifully the ministry of Bishop Mario, who, again, was entrusted to be the shepherd of this diocese here. He was nurturing, he was nurturing, and he was loving. Over the past few days, I've spoken to a number of people about their memories of Bishop Mario, including mine. The same words, the same phrases, the same nuances were repeated over and over again. A warm personality who could engage comfortably with people of all backgrounds, professions, and cultures. He was articulate, and he had a natural affinity with diverse cultures of people. He had that ability to put people at ease. Mario was very encouraging, as I said, to both priests and laity alike. Many mentioned his pastoral care and outreach, encouraging all to live out their baptismal calling. And I don't think it's surprising that the bishops of this country recognized his leadership and his spirit as he was elected as chairman for the Migration and, Ref and Refugee Service Committee. He most recently served as a member of the Committee on Domestic Justice and Human Development, Committee on Migration, Refugees, Committee on Religious Liberty, the Ad Hoc Committee Against Racism. He served on the clinic, which, uh, uh, on the board of clinic, which is uh, a, a, a legal arm that helps those, uh, those uh, who are uh, facing immigration issues of those who are new to our country. Communicating the good news was also very critical to the bishop and his concerns, again, for those most vulnerable. Bishop Dorsonville's life and purpose were intertwined, though, with his vocation. His life as a priest, his call to serve God's people as a priest, and to proclaim the good news, the good, the good news, the gospel, as a bishop. We know that as Christians, death is not the end. And as a bishop, I think a bishop is called to help his people walk, walk with Christ, and know that there is purpose and there is meaning in their life, but that this is not the ultimate place that we are called to be. We are ultimately all each called to be with our God in heaven. In the preface of the Mass for the Dead, we pray, Lord, for your faithful people, life is changed, not ended. When the body of our earthly dwelling lies in death, we gain an everlasting dwelling place in heaven. We Christians, therefore, believe in the resurrection, and that is the basis of our belief in Christ, who is our God, who walks with us as one of us, and whose joy, whose hope, whose faith we put so that we can live our lives with purpose and meaning. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then let us eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. But we know that this philosophy of life is meaningless and purposeless. Physical death there must be, but for those who believe in Christ, there is established this fellowship, this friendship, which cannot be served or ended by death. Bishop Mario knew this throughout his life. Every relationship that he had, every friendship he had, any interaction he had, he always made you feel special because I'm sure he saw Christ, the living Christ, in each one of us. As I started my um, homily 
You know, I started out by that way that he always greeted me. My dear Michael, how many of you have been greeted, my dear? Probably all of us, huh? Because that was who he was. He saw the risen Lord throughout his ministry and all of the people that he met and all of the people that he was called to serve. We must always regard our life on earth as, again as something that is transitory, something that is not meant to stay here. And maybe this gives us a little consolation in knowing that Bishop Mario returns to that which he was meant to be, which he gave his life to proclaim and to encourage us to live in such a manner that we too will be ready for that day when we are called home. So Bishop Mario's legacy is a priest and desire as a shepherd was to encourage each of us to be pleasing in the Lord so that when we die, we too may go with a purpose to our life and that we may truly go with hearts filled with joy. It is this kingdom that we are each called to be a part of that is a part of our church and a part of our community now. A kingdom, the kingdom of God that Christ came to proclaim with joy, to die for, and to open for each one of us to be a member of. We all shall meet again in that company of the saints, with Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Bishop Mario fully deserves now his rest in eternity. And now he will be reunited with his beloved parents, Leonor and Carlos, in eternity. I know he also had such a great devotion and love for the Blessed Mother. He used to like to come to uh, St. Mark uh, in uh, College Park, Maryland, Adelphi, Maryland, where I used to live. And there, there, were, uh, a, there was a significant Latino community. Uh, we, they were from all various cultures. Some were from El Salvador, many were from uh, Honduras, the pastor was from Nicaragua, and uh, there, were, there, there were quite a few Mexicans. It was really a, a, a mixed match of cultures, even within the Latino community. He used to always like to come to visit there, where he had Our Lady of Guadalupe to love and, and to pray, pray with and to ask for her intercession, and also Jesus the Savior on the other side of the, of the entrance way, uh, who was very special to the people of, of El Salvador. And uh, he, again, it was uh, to the Blessed Mother that he certainly gave his heart and went to for his own consolation and his own, his own uh, um, uh, peace. So today, again, we give thanks for this beautiful life, this beautiful life that and ministry that Bishop Mario led. We give thanks again for the goodness that he gave to all of us who were his friends, his family. We continue to pray for one another. We pray that we too will see our good friend again and be greeted, my dear Michael, my dear friend. God bless you all. Be assured of our prayers.
Jesus Christ is risen, the firstborn of the dead. With confidence in the salvation he brings, we now confidently offer our prayers. To the following petitions, please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all his bishops and priests, that the Holy Spirit may guide their work of proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of God in the world today. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the Diocese of Homa Thibodeau family, in this time of loss and grief, that we may find strength and consolation in our Christian faith and in the love and support of one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those persons on our parish prayer line, may the Lord's healing touch be on them and their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our For justice and peace in the world, especially in areas where war, violence, and conflict are prevalent, let us pray to the Lord. Lord our that the prayers of Mary, the mother of God, who stood by the cross as her son was dying, may help those who mourn and be with all of us in our current time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of us here today and for all members of our church, that we may be prepared for the hour of our own death when God will call us by name to pass from this world to the next. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for all intentions spoken <coughs> and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God of love, justice, and mercy, hear our prayers. Give Bishop Mario and our beloved dead the reward of their labors and grant us your consolation in our loss. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice, which your departed servant and bishop Mario, while in the body, offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the power and the glory of Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shall enter my room. Only say the word, and my soul shall be.
us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Mario, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ, in whom he hoped and whom he preached, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Just a few final words. Thank you, Bishop Fisher, for sharing so eloquently your friendship with Bishop Maru and how much he loved this diocese. When I would speak to Bishop Mario, he would always say, thank you for giving me such a wonderful diocese. And I would always say, I would have stayed if I could have. <laughs> and we would laugh, and he would say, I understand why. So he deeply, deeply loved the people of this diocese. I also bring you the prayerful thoughts and support of the wonderful faithful of the Archdiocese of Louisville, who were absolutely stunned, like you were, to hear of Bishop Mario's death. And the number of people who came up to me and said, we are so sorry to hear that your successor in whom Thibodeau unexpectedly died, our hearts go out to them. We're probably going to the funeral. Please assure them of our thoughts and our prayers, so you are definitely in the prayers and on the thoughts of the faithful in the Archdiocese of Louisville. So please know that we are all in this together with you, and the Lord surely will guide us into the future. Thank you for your prayers. The Lord be with you. And I invite my brother bishops to join me in giving the final blessing. May Almighty God bless you now and always, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Master, go in peace. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.